So homeowners generally aren't asking for certificates of liability insurance? Typically they're not, however they can. Let's use the same scenario and you're doing a commercial tenant improvement and it may be a $10,000 job and you do the same thing. Right. Same, same thing could apply. But then if they maybe will need general liability insurance to take it one step further if they plan to bid on jobs or do commercial work right. or yeah. sub, be a sub for another for a general contractor. Yes, very true. Typically that's very true if you're a sub for a general uh, or if you're doing a tenant improvement for a commercial job they will ask for a certificate of insurance that ensures you have general liability and limits that are typically at least equal to one million, two million, one million limits. Again that's one million <coughs> per occurrence. 2 million aggregate and 1 million for products and completed operations. Um, they will uh, typically also ask on that certificate to include work comp, whether you're required to have it or not. When you're helping clients with their general liability insurance and um, they have an issue with their needing a certificate and that sort of thing, how is it that how is our workflow working with an account manager like Debbie in terms of how they might get that certificate in a timely manner and be able to do additional wording and, and things like that? The process that we've been using thus far is such that the client will contact myself or Debbie and say I need a certificate of insurance and then what we require is who is this certificate of insurance going for? Are they going to be a scheduled additional insured? Are they, uh, is it a blanket additional insured that's required? And then uh, we take that information, uh, check it against the policy itself to make sure that coverage is there, and then basically issue that uh, certificate either to the client or to the, the client's client, which is often the case, and they get it direct. When you have a new account and they have a list of certificate holders that they're requiring, or they're doing a new job somewhere and they need that certificate, can you walk me through the process of generally how they contact you and how, how that goes? Um, ideally, I ask for every insured to send me via email their request because I want that paper trail mm -hmm. so we can attach that to the file. I, number one, ask how that additional insured, how, what interest they have with the insured. And then after that, I go forward, I double check the policy um, and make sure that the limits are on there at accordingly and if not then we may have to endorse whatever they're looking for whether it be with a contractor or just an individual that's asking for the certificate especially if there is additional wording asking for endorsements like waiver of subrogation or uh, primary, primary non-contributory those are all endorsements that if they're not on the policy those have to be added and they do cost so you do have to inform the insured that that your policy does not meet the guidelines mm -hmm. per the request for the certificate holder, so therefore we have to add or amend the policy right. accordingly. So I'll open this up generally to both of you. Is would, Are you seeing situations where a contractor is applying for a job and maybe in the bid request it's not saying that this sort of wording or this sort of situation is going to be necessary and then after the job is underway and now they're submitting these certificates to the general for payment, uh, suddenly now there's a new list of information that they're asking for? I don't find that generally and I only say that because when I'm running quotes for clients I always include primary wording waiver subrogation and blanket AI. Mm -hmm. I include that in the premium. Some providers that we use we've been able to negotiate those down to a very minimal price and some even to zero but in my mind in order to protect that client's interest I always want to have those three things and actually that's another thing that a general might require of you if you're a sub is to make sure in that certificate of insurance it not only shows the limits and who the carrier is but there's a box up towards the top where that policy number is that says primary wording and waiver of subrogation and those have to be checked. If I get a, re a request for a certificate of insurance with a client, for example, that's doing a, a commercial TI, um, I will ask typically for them to send me the insurance requirements that, that that client wants or that general wants. And then I can check that against the policy and what it has and what it doesn't have if it doesn't. Um, but me personally, I think if, if I, to not quote those three things in the general liability quote, I think it's a disservice to the client. Yeah. 
Um, do you have anything to add on that? No, Debbie? I agree with Tom. It's better mm -hmm. to have those uh, those issues up front handled because otherwise you get into a problem where you're reissuing the certificates, you're having to go back to the carrier okay. and add endorsements, and then it's very costly for the insured. Mm -hmm. And so if you put that on up front immediately, then you're alleviating all the problem. I see that too. I've several times, certificates going back and forth and back and forth, and they're asking for this or that right. change. Sometimes related to those endorsements, sometimes related to what appears to be relatively minor wording, uh, di wording, wording differences and yeah. how the, the additional insured is supposed to be named. Could you speak to that a little bit? Uh, uh, do you ever find that they're coming back with something different than even on the original request? Oftentimes they do, but ideally, as Tom said, you know, if you can get the contract what the certificate holder is asking, then you can alleviate all that. Because yeah. specifically under the guidelines of the insurance, in the contract, it'll specifically say how uh, the additional insurance needs to be named or the certificate holder needs to be named. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times there's a multitude of entities that are involved with that additional insurance. So, right. And they expect it to be worded exactly as such. Mm -hmm. So if you can get that contract immediately, then, you know. So the best way is to send it to you via email. Um, and they can send it via fax. But we do need it in writing, right, is essentially exactly. the bottom line. because. The commas and the periods and the spacing all matter right. in that it situation. Is. It's very mm -hmm. important. Artists and contractors, if you will, that are subbing out a percentage of work to a, another trade, either another trade or the same right. trade, mm -hmm. uh, really they do need to verify that those subs have their own insurance. Can you speak a little bit to what happens if they don't at time at renewal? If you're using subcontractors in, in any form or fashion as an artisan or whatever, and I'm in general and you're an artisan, it's really imperative that you do those things we talked about earlier in providing a certificate from them to you. And I wouldn't do it one time. I mean, if this person is doing a six-month job for you, I would make sure that I had that certificate, you know, perhaps once a month. I know that's a lot of work, but there are contractors out there or artisans out there that have purchase a general liability policy that they're going to finance over the course of the year. They put uh, $500 down and then they don't make any payments anymore. And they're working for you for five months with no cover. Maybe a best practice is, is as you're paying, before you cut them a check for the work just completed, uh, make sure that you're getting a certificate every time. Right. And a lot of times the, our artists and contractors that we're working with are on the receiving side of that, they need that certificate exactly. to go to now, to get paid. To get paid. To go. <laughs> that's why it's so. That's why time is so important right. and such an urgent. And we we understand that as an agency that it is urgent that they get that certificate exactly, to right. to the additional insured so that they can get paid, so that they can pay their uh, employees and they can cover their costs and expenses. Right. A client asked us. Uh, we sent me an email and said, "I need a certificate for this company and this company." We can't do much with that. You know, we need a name, we need an address, we need to know ideally an email address so we can send it directly or a fax number. Uh, we ideally need to know how to get in touch with them if there's any questions. Some companies have a form you can fill out. If nothing else, call, talk to the agent, talk to the customer service person, get that information up front and we can have it to you in less than an hour. Mm -hmm. But if you don't give us what we need to work with, we can't help you. So if you're a contractor out there considering looking for a new agency to work with, uh, we would ask that you consider Alta Vista Insurance to make us uh, your new partner, if you will. Uh, our goal is to help you grow and protect your business so that you can do what you do best by allowing us to do what we do best. We're, um, we're actively looking for new client relationships to grow and expand our business, and we hope that uh, you'll give us careful consideration in considering working with Tom and Debbie to help you with all of your contractors' needs. We look forward to working with you in the future. If you have any questions or want to discuss more, feel free to give us a call and respond. Thank you.